Hey guys, it's Dr. Mary Barbera here. And I wanted to hop on and I'm going to talk all about autism or signs of autism and having children or clients who are not speaking, considered nonverbal or minimally verbal. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I... I say I fell, quote unquote, into the autism world in the late 1990s when my firstborn son, Lucas, started showing signs of autism. Um, he started showing signs at a little over a year. Here's Lucas. And then I have another son, Spencer. They're both in their mid-20s. And um, Lucas started showing signs of autism. I had a master's degree in nursing, married to a physician, my husband first mentioned the possibility of autism when Lucas was 21 months old, told him I never ever wanted to hear the word autism again. Um, Lucas is now, like I said, in his mid twenties and, and he is, um, I would consider him minimally verbal. He does talk. He always had words and he did lose some words, but he didn't lose all of his words, but he's definitely not conversational he um, needs a lot of support and supervision. So I then went on to become a board certified behavior analyst, earn a PhD, wrote two best selling books, including my newest book, Turn Autism Around, an action guide for parents of young children with early signs of autism. I'm also an online course creator, and I'm an international keynote speaker. And last weekend, I went to Minnesota to the Finding Cooper's Voice conference to do the Saturday opening keynote. Um, I hadn't done a keynote in the autism world for uh, a few years, definitely before COVID. So I have done a lot of online speaking and I have two online courses, which is pretty much what I do all day long. So... Today, I wanted to come on and talk about kids being nonverbal, nonvocal, non speaking, minimally verbal. Because at the conference, when I did the opening keynote, I asked the audience, How many of you um, have kids that are either not speaking or you would consider minimally verbal? And I was kind of surprised because about 75 to 80% of the audience raised their hands. I then went on to ask how many kids are speaking or conversational and only about 20% raised their hands. There were a couple professionals in the audience that didn't have kids on the spectrum, but 95 to 99% of the 185 women that I presented to on Saturday and the 250 women that were there on Sunday um, had kids on the spectrum and most of them were not speaking or minimally verbal. So in between the conference sessions, I did get a lot of questions um, about, uh, you know, what do I think about uh, talking devices? You know, there's a lot of kids using iPads or iPhones to, um, identify pictures they want and to talk using devices. There's a lot of kids using sign language and pictures to communicate. And um, now I've been in the autism world for like 25 years now, um, if you consider when Lucas started to show signs. And, um, you know, there's just been, as technology has moved, there's just a whole lot more kids on devices and even little tiny kids, uh, two-year-olds, three-year-olds who I get diagnosed, uh, people put them on devices pretty quickly. Mostly speech pathologists put them on devices, but even ABA centers, and there just seems to be a push, even with parents, that they want you know, their children to communicate as well as possible. And if you're here and you're live, uh, let me know who's here and where you're from. Um, and if you have any questions related specifically to this topic, that would be great. Um, okay. We have a comment. Hello from Wyoming. I have a nonverbal autistic son that I love so much. I noticed my son, uh, having signs of autism at 18 months. Yeah. And this is very common. And, um, another comment, 
Uh, my son is nonverbal at the moment. He's three. What do you recommend? Yeah, great question. So when in between the conference uh, sessions, I got questions a lot. What do you think of AAC devices? Um, what do you think about, you know, what can I do to get my son talking or talking more? And every single person that said that their child was nonverbal, not speaking or mentally verbal, um, I would ask, do they have any sounds, word approximations, or what I call pop out words? Um, because in most cases, the answer is yes. They can say ba, mama. They can say um, pop or hi or bye or bubba for bu bubbles or bubba for bye bye. Um, appa for apple, you know, those kind of things. Or they can clearly articulate some words but just not in sentences and not fully conversational. So one of the things I, and, and a lot of people don't agree with me. A lot of speech pathologists don't agree with me. A lot of behavior analysts don't agree with me, but I, with my approach, with the turn autism around approach, which is four steps, it's easy for parents and professionals to learn these steps. It's very child-friendly and in the beginning, like if you have a child who's eight, who's using a device and it's working or using a picture exchange system or using sign language or using total communication, they're using a couple signs and they're using a device and they have some pictures as a backup and it's working, awesome. I would never recommend taking anything that's working away. But what I see a lot is that kids on devices or in picture systems or with sign language are not doing that great, that the device is either not utilized, the child needs to be prompted, the child's scrolling through signs and doing different signs, the child's having problem behaviors and you don't know what they want. So it's not working that great what's going on. No matter if it's working great what's going on or not working great, my focus would be to look at their vocal situation, take language samples um, of sounds you hear in a 15 minute session or an hour session or pop out words, you know, like pop out words are words that just come and pop out words could be part of like a little script they do. Like Lucas, uh, my son used to say, please do not be the ducks quack quack. But he'd say it like, bleed, do not, the da, da, quack, quack. So I knew what he was saying. But those are words and, and they're fairly articulated, right? So it was fine. Um, we need to keep track of those words. He could say hi or bye or mama or, um, you know, whatever he could say, say or He'd fill in the blanks as to songs. Those are all words that he says. You just don't know how to get him to talk or to say those words. He doesn't have a coic ability or I say, say ball and he says ball. But those pop out words definitely count as words. And if we have words or word approximations or even sounds, that means we can get more words. And that's where I don't start devices, pictures, or even signs early on. I uh, have procedures with a shoebox and potato head and inset puzzles and those kind of materials where we are simply pairing the word ball, ball, ball on a picture card or mama, 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 letting the child put it in a shoebox with a slit into it or having an inset puzzle, pig, 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 having the child put the pig in. It's not about building it, the puzzle correctly in silence. It's about having words paired with items. So potato head, eyes, 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 help the child build potato head. So these kind of procedures increase vocal language, increase the ability to attend, 
get some responses in, get some cooperation going, and the child will eventually, hopefully, these items, these early learner materials will become what we call conditioned reinforcers. And the child will be more likely to want to engage with them and then more likely to talk. Crystal says, uh, she's from Puerto Rico, says, my four-year-old has some pop-out words, but it's only when we tell her to say the word. How do we encourage her to speak without being prompted? So all of my procedures are in my book, Turn Autism Around. They're also in my online courses. So right now I have a toddler course for kids under six. And then I also have a school age course for kids older than six. So in these online courses, uh, they come with communities so you don't get stuck. We teach you how, whether a parent, you're a parent or a professional, we teach you how to increase talking, decrease tantrums, improve picky eating, sleeping, potty training, and more. The procedures are also outlined in my book. So you, you could start with the book or you can start with the online course. Um, I have many procedures, so it's, it's hard to say exactly what to do. I'm, I'm telling you a little bit with the examples of the inset puzzles and the shoebox with the slit into it. You definitely want to get pictures of mommy and daddy and the pet dog named Spot or the cat named, you know, um, brownie or whatever. So instead of saying cat, it's the, if it's a pet, you say brownie, 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 as you hand the child the picture to put in the shoe box. So those type of procedures really pair the word. If you think about like learning a foreign language, if I told you that drink was ubi, and you had no idea what the language was, but I said, ubi, ubi, ubi. You'd be more likely to go like, ubi. I have to remember that because I may want to drink later and I'm, I'm going to try to memorize that. So pairing the words with the item names is super important. Starting with words with one or two syllables. I have an online participant and his mom um, bought my course early on for her to help her son who was eight and he was considered nonverbal. He was on a device. He actually used a little iPhone type device and he was having a little bit of word approximations, but nobody was working on his vocal language at all. And um, they were teaching him to respond in whole sentences. So when they'd say, what's your name, they would teach him to go on the device and say, my name is Nicholas, which is six syllables. And his articulation, he didn't even have words. He just had word approximations. So I am very opposed to increasing the length of utterance, increasing sentence length until you have good uh, talking with one to syllable, two to syllable words. And then and the articulation is good. So we taught um, Nick's mom to just teach him what's your name without the device and he would say Nick because she was fine with calling him Nick or Nicholas, but Nick is much easier, especially easier than saying my name is Nicholas, which is six syllables, which is super hard, especially when your articulation is not good and you are not a talker. Um, so I'm not opposed to AAC, uh, augmentative and alternative communication. I'm not opposed to talking devices, sign language, pictures. But what I am um, cautioning you all is that we need to keep vocal language on the table. We need to keep it in the goal, in some goals. Um, I have met very few children who have no sounds, word approximations, or pop-out words. And in the process of doing the whole four-step child-friendly turn autism around approach, you will learn how to get the echoic ability going. I say ball, you say ball, which is super powerful. It op usually opens the floodgates, which is, which is great. Um, and we want to focus on those easy words and words that 
mean something to the child, mommy, daddy, and maybe it's mama, maybe it's mom and dad, dad, dad. And maybe it's uh, goldfish crackers, but they call them fishy. Um, and a drink cup. And they, if they drink mostly juice, you could call it juice. If they drink water, water, or just drink. Um, and reinforcers, people that are important to the child, one person per picture, and pets, and then functional things like shoes. You're going to hear shoes a lot. Um, you're going to hear chair, cup, bowl, spoon, um, animals, like the basic animals. Uh, and those are the kind of words we really want to teach. So in the end, you know, a lot of people say their child or client is nonverbal. I, well, first of all, everybody's verbal, even newborn babies are verbal because they cry to get their diaper changed and they cry to get a bottle. And so their crying is actually verbal behavior. They're communicating a reach for something, a point that's all verbal behavior. And, um, you know, they're, it's like, what should you call it? Like non-vocal, uh, they're making sounds. So a lot of people don't like that term either. Not speaking or minimally verbal or minimally vocal is how you would, you know, maybe, maybe call it. But in the end, we want to get kids verbal and vocal, even if they're on devices or using signs or using pictures, because vocal is understood by, by everybody, is easy. Um, you know, studies show that devices and signs and pictures aren't going to hurt your ability to be vocal. And I agree with that. However, if all of your goals are about the device and all parent training is about the device and all uh, staff training is about teaching sign or teaching device or finding pictures for different things the child likes, a lot of energy can go into that. And then nobody is working on the vocal piece and the shaping up things and keeping track of pop out words or sounds. Um, and I, I think no matter if you're 18 months, three, five, nine, 15, I, I actually don't think it's too late to get some vocal speech. And I've seen it. Uh, my granddaughter is three nonverbal has never said any words. And so there I would ask, how about sounds? How about, you know, very few kids I have seen are completely mute and not saying anything. Um, so th those would be my questions. And they were what we talked about in between sessions at the conference in Minnesota, uh, which really got me thinking, like, there's a lot of people out there that um, have a lot of IEP goals and a lot of uh, therapy related to devices. And then what are we doing to really help vocal language? I also did a podcast uh, episode with Dr. Barbara Ash, who's both a SLP, speech and language pathologist, as well as a doctoral level behavior analyst like I am. And um, Dr. Barbara Ash also has a very similar perspective to me, even though she has the additional uh, credentials as a very expert SLP. She thinks we are pushing, um, you know, pushing the non-vocal so much that, you know, the devices and sign and everything that we really need to also uh, really focus on that vocal speech. Because like I said, it is the easiest and most functional form of communication. So I don't think we should ever give up on that. I have a lot of parent-friendly strategies and professionals uh, can learn these same techniques to improve vocal speech. So for those of you just joining, if you have questions about uh, children non-verbal, non-vocal, um, I also wanted to mention, I did tell you I have the toddler preschooler course for kids one to five that either have autism or signs of autism. Half of our members in the toddler course and community do not have a diagnosis of autism but they're making great strides regardless because it's the same child-friendly techniques. 
And then I also have a brand new school age course for kids six and older who still are struggling with things like talking, tantrums, eating, sleeping, potty training, and more. Um, in, but that is actually just coming to be just this week. Um, and it is included for only one more week as part of the verbal behavior bundle which is a huge library of resources to help program and teach kids who are early or intermediate learners um, in the verbal behavior bundle, which is the last chance you can get it is next week. Um, it includes how to program, how to do the VB map assessment, how to program for kids who are either not speaking minimally verbal or Inter more intermediate learners where they are talking in phrases and need to learn how to do prepositions and pronouns and how to transition from a bath to a shower, all kinds of things, early academics, reading, math, writing, language for learning. That's all on sale. Six months of access, $497. You get tons and tons of uh, contact hours if you're a behavior analyst you get um, or an early intervention professional and then just life-changing strategies if you're a parent as well so uh, we have on the screen here marybarbera.com forward slash courses for more information about the online courses and community we you also if you have a child over six years of age you also get that school age course as part of the verbal behavior bundle it's a really good deal it's going to be available for one more week i've been selling it for years um for six months of access but that is changing after next week so if you have been on the fence or want to take a look now would be the time uh this weekend next week would be your last chance to come in to the directly to the verbal behavior bundle. We are we are training parents and professionals. Um, we even have a train the trainer program that we just started about six weeks ago. We have eighty professionals and very advanced parents learning how to be coaches with the Turn Autism Around approach. We're really making great strides. So. Um, Okay, well, it looks like we don't have any further questions about non-vocal, minimally vocal. I've done a lot of work on this, podcasts, video blogs. Um, you can always search Mary Autism plus whatever topic you're struggling with um, to read a little bit or hear a podcast. It may really change things for you. And then, of course, always check out my courses because that is the best way I can help you. Um, even if you wanted to come in and pay me thousands of dollars to help you specifically with your own child, I would still uh, uh, really encourage you and um, to take the online course because there's only so much I can um, help you with. The online courses have videos to lead you step by step what to do to improve the situation all around, which is amazing. And we've been at this online course uh, creation for over eight years now. We've had parents and professionals from over 100 countries join us. Really is quite a quite a community that I'm very proud of. So hopefully this has helped uh, clear some things up. But there's so much, so many resources on my website, on YouTube, on podcasts, but I wanted to hop on live just to uh, answer some questions and just to give you a rundown. So have a great rest of the day, great weekend. And I hope to pop back on here more live soon and I'll see you then. Take care. Bye.